you know, let's take a look at this word. Um, it may be a good idea just for the class in general to take a look at this word, uh, virtue, because it'll be one that'll be with us for this whole second part of the course in Plato's Meno and Aristotle's Ethics. <clears throat> uh, looking it up in a dictionary, this is a Greek English dictionary, may be kind of silly because what has Socrates just done? He said, I don't know what virtue is. So what we'll see is if he'll say to Mino, well, I mean, let's ask, you know, what is virtue? That becomes the question. So the presumption is that it's not something that you can just rely upon common usage uh, to know what virtue is. You can't, I mean, there were no dictionaries in, in Socrates' time, but we, the notion is that we can't just look it up in a dictionary to find out what it is. We have to ask the fundamental question ourselves, uh, not presuming that anybody else or we know what it is. But uh, there's, obviously he understands the word. He may not know what virtue is, but he is familiar with the word arete that, that, that Mino is asking about. So it may do some good to look at the senses of the word, sort of dictionary senses of the word. Um, so can kind of see that there, um, arete, uh, Greek Greek letters, it may not, you know, a little different, but there it is, arete, uh, goodness, excellence of any kind. So that's often said about arete is that, you know, generally speaking, it meant excellence, not just moral qualities uh, that we should have, but any good qualities that we have, we should have, like a horse, could have arete if it was like a really wonderful horse or a work of art could have arete if it was a, an especially good work of art, like a ma masterpiece, like the Mona Lisa would have arete as a work of art, excellence. Um, Mino was asking about it in the human sense of arete, almost as if how do I become an excellent human being? You know, a person of arete would be a, a great person, a person who is admirable person who is uh, fit for, uh, let's say, leadership. So goodness, of, goodness, excellence of any kind, especially of manly qualities, uh, manhood, valor, prowess from Homer and Herodotus, like the Latin vertus from, from vir or vir, which means man, like, you know, really like a male human being, manliness. There is an element to that too, and I think what Mino is asking because he he as we find out more about him, we, we see that he's interested in politics. He wants to be admired. He wants to be like his heroes. You know, he wants to be like the great leaders of history and, and perhaps of his own time, and to be somebody who's admired for his his greatness and um, for his excellence. And so there's a there's an element of manliness here, uh, rank, nobility goodness, excellence, in the moral sense, good. So it's a complex word, like, like most words of its kind, you know, that, that denote um, a, uh, an abstract quality. It, it's, it's never simple when you look it up in a, in a dictionary. There's various meanings, but, but we do get a sense there of, you know, okay, what is Mino actually asking about? What is it that Socrates has, has claimed that he, that he doesn't know? <clears throat> so, um, Socrates has just said to Mino on the first page, I, I don't know what virtue is. Why don't you tell me what it is? Right? And, and at the top of page two, we see Mino's first, you know, Socrates says, well, I don't, I don't know what it is. I mean, you know, maybe... Maybe I've heard, I don't know. I forget what other people say. So you tell me, you, know, you tell me, Mino, what, what virtue, you teach me, man. And Mino says, <clears throat> right there at top page two, well, there'll be no difficulty, Socrates, in answering your question, you know, what is virtue? Let us first take the virtue of a man. He should know how to administer the state and in the administration of it to benefit his friends and harm his enemies. And he must also be careful not to suffer harm himself. A woman's virtue, if you wish to know about that, may also be easily described. Her duty is to order her house and to keep what is indoors and obey her husband. Every age, every condition of life, young or old, male or female, bond or free, 
has a different virtue. There are virtues numberless and no lack of definitions of them. For virtue is relative to the actions and ages of each of us in all that we do. And the same may be said of vice, Socrates. And there's just a, that's just a note that has been inserted to compare that to what Aristotle says in his, in his politics. Um, so uh, ignoring Mino's misogyny, you know, his contempt for women there, or maybe the Greek contempt for women that's embodied in that, uh, to say there's a virtue of a man, there's a virtue of a woman, there's a virtue of a free person, there's a virtue of a slave, there's a virtue, there's an excellence in virtue, for they're, they're numberless. It's all relative to your position. It, it's not an unreasonable answer in, in that, in, in that, you know, it, it says there are, there are virtues numberless. You know, it all depends on your, you know, your, your whether you're a man or a woman, whether you're rich or poor, whether you're this or that but there are many virtues. The first thing that strikes us that Socrates really has an agenda, I think is his response to that. Look, look at how he responds to Mino. Oh, how fortunate I am, Mino. Okay, irony, right? Okay. When I ask you for one virtue, you present me with a swarm of them, which are in your keeping. Like I asked you one thing, I said, what is virtue? And, and what did you do? Did you answer my question? No, you said, well, the virtue, what is virtue? Well, the virtue of man is to be powerful. The virtue of a woman is to obey her husband. The virtue of enslavement. Is... But that's not what I asked you. I asked you what virtue was. I asked you for one thing, not for a whole swarm of them. Suppose that I carry on the figure of the swarm and ask of you, what is the nature of the bee? And you answer that there are many kinds of bees. And I reply, but do bees differ as bees? because there are many and different kinds of them, or are they not rather to be distinguished by some other quality? As for example, beauty, size, or shape, how would you answer me? Well, Mino says, I should answer that bees do not differ from one another as bees. Like insofar as they're bees, they have some commonality. They don't differ, they're, they're the same. They may be this or that kind of bee, but insofar as they are bees, they're all the same. And Socrates says, and if I went on to say, that is what I desire to know, Mino, to me, tell me what is the quality in which they do not differ, but are all alike, would you be able to answer? I should. And so of the virtues. Remember, now virtue is being used in the plural here, which we'll become very familiar with when we look at Aristotle's ethics. And so the virtues, however many and different they may be, they all have a common nature, which makes them virtues. And on this, he who would answer the question, what is virtue, would do well to have his eye fixed. Do you understand? Mino says, kind of. Right? <laughs> I mean, it's a, we're already into some pretty deep philosophical territory. The virtues, the Aratai, I guess. I remember my Greek very well, quite honest. A long time ago that I read Greek a little bit. Um, but let's go back to, there's virtue. And then there are the virtues, right? and we can list the virtues, uh, justice, moderation, courage, uh, wisdom. Those are the four major virtues. Right? And there are others, uh, I don't know, um, generosity, uh, Et cetera, et cetera. You know, they just go on and on. But just say that, we, we, okay, we call justice a virtue. We call moderation a virtue. We call courage a virtue. We call wisdom a virtue. And they're obviously different from each other. But wisdom is not courage. Justice is not uh, moderation. These are different qualities. But we call them all by the same name, virtue. We, we say they're all virtues, so they must have something identical to them, which qualifies them as virtues, if, if you're following. Just as there's maybe, maybe there's many different kinds of bees, but we call them all bee, so there must be something about them which is common, which makes them all bees. There must be something about justice, moderation, courage, wisdom, which makes them all virtues. Tell me what that is. 
tell me what that common element is. And this is Platonism. This is this is the this is the Socratic inquiry, like looking into these common these commonalities. Well, you know, okay, you say that justice and, and is a virtue and moderation is a virtue. Wisdom and courage are virtues, but and maybe you're right, but what is virtue? What is that common element that we presume that they all share? Sort of what the major thrust of what Socrates is doing kind of usually is. Uh, and Socrates doesn't want this, you know, virtue is relative thing. He, want, he He's insisting that virtue must be one thing. And whether he's right about that is a great philosophical question. Um, <clears throat> However, he does convince Mino at least to try it out, right? That uh, is, by page three, bottom towards the bottom of page three, Socrates, Mino says, well, will you have one def definition of them all? And Socrates says, yeah, that's what I'm seeking. That's exactly it. I want the one definition of virtue that will cover all those different virtues that you're referring to. So instead of just pointing out examples of virtue, tell me what it is that they all share that makes them virtues in the first place. That, give me that one definition which will cover them all. And that's, you know, kind of what, again, what Socrates is about. He's, he's about seeking that one definition that will cover everything. And we'll, you know, we'll eventually see that the Platonism, that's what's called the form or the, the ADOS in English translation, the form, the, the one idea or essence that underlies all of the particular things and draws them all together. <clears throat> so Mino kind of gets it here at the bottom page. So, well, if you want to have one definition of them all, like it, that he gets the kind of answer that Socrates wants, this one definition to fit them all. He says, I know not what to say, but that virtue is the power of governing mankind. You can sort of see what the kind of person that Mino is. He, he associates virtue with power. He associates greatness or excellence with uh, with, full, with, with power, being able to dominate others. Um, and Socrates, you know, points out that, that, well, wait a second, man. So, but a child, would that be the virtue of a child or a slave? Um, the power to govern mankind? Because it doesn't seem that those people are in the position to do that. And Socrates says, no. I mean, Mermino says, no, I think not. And, and Socrates, well, well, then you're going to have to come up with a different virtue, right? Um, pointing out the complications already and, and the ambiguity between virtue and the virtues, right? So here on page four, Mino is already getting confused. Right? Why, Socrates, even now, I am not able to follow you in the attempt to get at one common notion of virtue as of other things. That is... It's hard with things like virtue to point out what the common element is. With other things, it's, it's fairly easy. So say in mathematics, there are different types of, uh, of uh, triangle, you know, uh, equilateral, isosceles, right triangles. Um, but they all have, they're all triangles, and we can, we can define triangles so as to encompass all the different types of triangle. But it's not so easy when it comes to the messy world of the human the messy, complex, imprecise world of the human. We're talking about human characteristics like virtue to try to come up with that one definition. But Socrates is, is sure that, that you can do it. Right? And he's, you know, sort of giving Mino uh, examples, like how would you, how would you define color and, and, and shape, you know, trying, trying to kind of walk him through it. So when we get to, uh, <clears throat> I mean, he, he is, you know, trying to get me, you know, trying to show me, you know, the way, like, okay, this is the kind of answer I want, and this is how it can be done, you give him these other examples. Um, uh, 
So on page seven, Socrates says to Mina, well then, for my own sake, as well as for yours, I will do my very best. But I am afraid that I shall not be able to give you very many as good. And now in your turn, you are to fulfill your promise and tell me what virtue is in the universal. Like I've, I've done my bit here to try to show you, you know, how this can be done. Now it's up to you to do it. What is virtue in the universal? And do not make a singular into a plural, as the facetious say of those who break a thing, but deliver virtue to me whole and sound and not broken into a number of pieces. I have given you the pattern. So what do we want here? We want a definition of virtue which would cover all the things that we would consider virtues and that would that would explicate what the common element of all those virtues was and, and would give us the, the essence of virtue. And so Mino tries again here on page seven. Well then, Socrates, virtue, as I take it, is when he who desires the honorable is able to provide it for himself. So what is virtue? It's when he who desires the honorable is able to provide it for himself. Uh, so the poet says, and I say too, virtue is the desire of things honorable and the power of attaining them. So again, it, it, it fits the form, right? It, it's a universal definition of, of virtue. It's not like that first one where he was just pointing out the different kinds of virtue, the virtue of man, the virtue of woman, etc. He's, he's got what Socrates wants, at least formally, to give this kind of attempt, at least, to have a one-size-fits-all sort of definition. Uh, but as we'll see, the question is whether the definition, even if it's formally correct, that is, it's in the right form, whether it's actually true. 